Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bladensburg Town Council meeting for Monday, June the 6th. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight's meeting is now called to order. At this time, we will begin tonight's meeting with an opening prayer. And Councilmember McBride, before um, asking you to begin, I just want to, um, at the conclusion of the prayer, ask if we could have a brief moment of silence. Uh, we've seen so many mass shootings since the last time we were all together. And sadly, the, it's, this list is not comprehensive, but just to name a few, at the uh, grocery store in Buffalo, New York, at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, at a medical facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma, an entertainment district in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at a Taiwanese church yesterday in Orange County, uh, California. Our hearts are broken for those who are mourning right now. And so again, after the prayer, we just ask for a moment of silence. Over to you, Council Member McBride. Thank you, Mary Jane. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you, God, for the blessing of life, health, and strength and the activities of all of our limbs. We thank you for our loved ones far and near. Father, we ask you to bless those that are in bereavement on today. We ask you to help them and strengthen them in days to come in the loss of their loved ones. We ask you to continue to bless us, Father, bless the our mental state, oh God. Bless our hearts and our minds. And I pray that we come to a, a place of unity, a place of love once again for one another, where we love our neighbor as ourselves. I ask you to remember the council today and God, that we make wise decisions, that we be quick to hear, that we be slow to speak, and that we be in unity. For where there is unity, there is strength. I pray that you bless us all and let's have this moment of silence for those that are in bereavement. Thank you so much for that council member McBride. Uh, at this time, I'll ask, would you mind uh, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? And um, Mr. Gray, do you mind putting up the flag for us? There it is. Councilmember McBride, you wanna lead us? Oh, or Councilmember okay. Brown? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. At this time, uh, Mr. Charnovich, can you please forward the link to Senator Augustine and Delegate Fennell? They're standing by uh, waiting for that. Um, and they're asking if it could be text over for the sake of time, if you don't mind. Um, or if you can text the link to me, I can just forward it to both of them if that's easier. Um, oh, there's delegate. There's Senator coming in. So while they're connecting in uh, at this time, I will call for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. moved by council member McBride. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Council Member Blunt. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. At this time, we are extremely honored to have with us Senator Malcolm Augustine for District 47, as well as Delegate Diana Fennell, looking fabulous as always <laughs> from our <laughs> district as well. Uh, we had a very uh, special opportunity to be with them on Saturday, but I don't want to steal the Senator's thunder. So I will turn it over to him and Delegate Fennell for the uh, presentation regarding the Bostwick House. Well, well thank you uh, very much, Mayor James. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Malcolm Augustine, very, very pleased to be here with you all this evening. Actually not to talk about Bostwick House, 
although we were very pleased, obviously, to uh, make a presentation on Saturday of $500,000 to the town of Blazon Bladensburg towards the restoration of the Boswick House, um, worked uh, in conjunction with the town on um, working with the governor and, and the town. So we're very pleased about that. But in fact, I thought this evening we were actually going to talk about the municipal center, uh, which we worked with the town on. And I'm really just very grateful that the town uh, made an outstanding presentation to our capital budget chair, uh, Craig Zucker of the Senate. Um, he was very impressed uh, with the presentation that was made. And we were just very, very pleased um, to be able to um, come up with $800,000. And I actually have a check here for the town, even though we're virtual. I'm going to put that check up here for $800,000 uh, towards the municipal center, which we all know is in just, we need it uh, so much in the town and it's going to serve us so very well. So I know the delegate Fennell, who was the leader of this on the house side in, in, in conjunction with Delegate Ivy would probably have a few words, but I just, you know, I'm grateful uh, for our partnership and really looking forward to putting this $800,000 grant to work in the town of Bladensburg. Thank you so much, Senator. Delegate Fennell? I, I just want to say it's just, um, it was an honor and a pleasure to be able to do so, to go out to get the monies for um, the town of Bladensburg, the Senator, myself, and Julian, you know, um, we asked for it. You never know if you're going to get it, but they gave it because they know that you're trying to do wonderful things for the town of Bladesburg. So it's a testament to you and your council leadership. So I just want to say, you know what? You all are welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we uh, still have to get the pictures posted. I'm not sure if they went up over the weekend, but I thought Senator might also just mention we were with him, Delegate Fennell and Delegate Ivy on Saturday for the half million dollar presentation for the Bostwick House Preservation. Yes. And so this is in addition to that, as he stated, for the new municipal center that the council wants to move forward in order to better serve our residents as well as our staff and give us room to grow. And so we, on behalf of the council, we just sincerely appreciate this continued level of support um, it, from the council with, yes, virtual applause, physical applause. We want to give all the kudos to you in the world because this is huge to have your support and your buy-in into our vision for our residents. And so council members, did anyone else want to um, just extend a thank you? Looking for hands raised. Okay. So, so for, on, yes. Um, go oh, ahead. go ahead, Council Member Rao. <laughs> um, we, our residents really need a municipal center. Um, and so get, so our residents want to thank you as well. Thank um, you. Because we need it. And, you know, there are other, you know, we often get questions, well, where's, where's the money coming, you know, to other municipalities and where is, is it coming to Bladensburg? But, you know, we're proud enough now to say that Senator Malcolm Augustine, Delegate Diana Fennell, Delegate Julian Ivey, they have advocated for us to get not one, but two projects. And that makes all the difference. And it just shows how, you know, close-knit we are and how we work well together. So I That's thank fine. you so much. You're thank absolutely you. welcome. You're welcome. welcome. Thank you. Councilmember Brown. Thank you, uh, Mayor James. Yes, I definitely would like to thank um, the delegates and the senators because when they go to Annapolis, I mean, I, I mean, they are really, really fighting, fighting for, for the municipalities, fighting for the people, fighting for the state. And um, as Delegate Fennell said, and uh, it, and, and from Senator Augustine is, is that they never know whether, you know, it, if we're going to get it or not. So for them to, to, to go and be able to come back and deliver uh, this to, to Bladensburg, we definitely, you know, from the council, Mayor Council and our residents, thank you all so very much for so diligently going up there, going um, is sequestering, uh, you know, from January. <laughs> I call, call y'all being sequestered. <laughs> Can I get on to come home on the weekend? <laughs> I know it's not easy. Thank you, Councilmember Brown, but it's yeah, not yeah, easy. Yeah, but yeah, the but senator, we, we, the senator, myself, and Delicate Eye, we go out there and we fight for you guys. And you are, yes. we and we appreciate the citizen, appreciate you, you guys' leadership. And you know, and hey, this is what you sent us yeah. to do. 
Yeah, and not and not and not just for Bladen, you know, for Bladensburg, yes, but not just for Bladensburg as well, but not just for all of the other municipalities and just for your constituent services, what you do out there being very uh, diligent and committed uh, public servants. There's a difference. I always say there's a difference between being a public serv servant and being a politician. Public servants get out there, serve the people, do the work and get the job done and bring it, bring it home to, um, to the people. So thank you all very much once again, continue to, to serve. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. And just to you know, put a bow on it, I, I want the residents to understand we were cautioned at the beginning of this process not to ask for two because it is very difficult to get two bond bills passed in the same legislative cycle. But we have faith. We believed in this team that you see here in Delegate Ivy and they delivered. And so again, from the bottom of our hearts on behalf of our businesses, uh, all of our community stakeholders and residents, the staff and the council, thank you all so very much. And thank you for taking the time to join because I know you're being pulled in many different directions at the moment. Yes. So thank you all. We'll let you get back to your work. But again, thank you for joining and thank you for your continued service. Thank you all. <laughs> Grateful. All the best. Thank you. You thank too. You. Fantastic. Head to another meeting. Take care. Bye bye. Take okay. care. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> they do not stop working. They just keep going and going, and we appreciate their good work. Uh, and so that completes the appearances for tonight's meeting. Uh, next, we want to move into the approval of the meeting minutes for the May 9th uh, council meeting. Is there a motion to approve? I so move. Moved by Council Member Route. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Council Member Blunt. Any discussion? edits or corrections. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll turn it over to Mr. Charnovich to read the public comments. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this evening, uh, there's just uh, one public comment that I've received. Oh, that sunlight's really coming at me here this evening um, <laughs> in my office. Um, just one public comment this evening. It's from um, Susan McCutcheon. Good evening, Mayor and Council, staff, and Bladensburgers. The Bladensburg Mental Health Awareness Day at the Bladensburg Community Center was a very successful event. I am pleased that We Lead by Example, Inc. could set up and be involved. We look forward to other occasions to partner with the town. We activists continue to fight the SC maglev. We do not know when the Federal Railroad Administration pause will end, but we are constantly preparing for a tough fight, which might end up in the courts. We are planning to have an education table at a number of events throughout the summer and fall to inform people about SC maglev and our opposition. We hope Mayor James and the council will be supportive of our efforts and encourage them to find ways to help including by contributing funds to the Greenbelt City Council's legal firm engaged to fight the SC Maglev. We are hoping to host another opposition rally at the Bladensburg Waterfront Park in the fall. We had a successful one in 2018 that received a lot of attention by the media. I encourage everyone to become involved in trying to make positive changes despite so many disturbing and negative things facing our troubled world. We are responsible for fixing our own house before we can change the bigger things. So please pay attention to what you can do, beginning with the community in which you live. One thing is to pay attention to the upcoming elections. National and international politics dominate the news, but the average, I'm sorry, but the avenue of change starts with knowledgeably, knowledgeably electing the best candidates in the local, county, and statewide races then reminding those who are elected why they were elected. I urge everyone to be a part of the solution wherever possible. Otherwise, you are by default part of the problem. Let's try to make all of our lives better by civic engagement in one way or another as best we can. Yes, it does take a village. Thank you, uh, Susan McCutcheon. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Tarnovich. You made it without having to take a sip of water. <laughs> Just kidding. First, first time for everything. <laughs> right. Thank you, Ms. McCutcheon, for submitting that public comment. Uh, at this time, 
that concludes the public comments and uh, we do not have unfinished business for tonight's agenda. So we'll move right into the financial business with the mayor and council discretionary funds. I will turn it over to Mr. Chartnovich to kick this off and then Mr. Tonelli, if you wanna add some background as well. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, it is my understanding as um, we can come to the conclusion of the uh, fiscal year that there is a um, lot of them in the budget with council uh, discretionary funds, whereas each the mayor and each council member uh, has the ability to uh, utilize $500 uh, per elected official to be um, help to support a uh, an organization uh, in need in need of some additional help and funding. Uh, so uh, with that, I could turn it over to Mr. Tonelli if he, if he has anything to add. And if, if not, we can, um, uh, I guess, dive right into the discussion of, of, uh, of our organizations who are being um, supported this fiscal year. I think folks would, would rather hear about the organizations being supported than from me right now. So <laughs> I think he's tired of talking about the budget. <laughs> Uh, so with that, I just want to go uh, down the line and I'm going to start from my screen left to right if that's okay. So please don't be offended. It's no particular order. Um, I want to start with Council Member McBride, who's first on the left of my screen to just share the organization that she wants to help with her discretionary funds. Uh, for my discretionary funds, I decided that I would like to donate my funds to SHINE program, Community Development Corporation. Great, thank you. And for those uh, in the community, you probably know this organization because they've been a huge partner with food distribution giveaways. They have also uh, been doing the Thanksgiving annual giveaway. They used to hold it um, predominantly in Bladensburg where they give residents a turkey with a basket with all the fixings and it was free. I remember one of their early years, they even had a wardrobe out there so you could get Thanksgiving food and get free shoes, free clothes that were gently worn. Um, and they continue to do stand up and deliver here at Port Towns Elementary School every other Friday. So that I think that's fantastic, Council Member Bride. They're definitely a worthy organization and will appreciate your generosity. Council Member Brown. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I would like uh, for my discretionary funds to go to the Taekwondo Ramblers. I uh, wanted Dr. Thomas's late Dr. Late Dr. Thomas, great man, a great program um, to 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 the Taekwondo Ramblers, Ramblers, and also uh, and and if we can help to to target some of our Bladensburg students who attend the International High School. Because um, uh, we do know that, uh, yes, that uh, there's, there's uh, interest and need there. And, and, um, but that's where I would like for my funds to go to the Taekwondo members. Great. Thank you, Council Member Brown. And I know that'll go a long way in helping those students in need. And it's a great organization. Uh, Council Member, I almost said Dr. Blunt. Oh, my goodness. Council Member Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I spoke it into existence. <laughs> I want mine to go to get Reverend Gail Addison in um, town ministries. Because I, I use her students every year. So, yeah. Yeah, you have such a good relationship going with them and the student workers. So that's fantastic. Thank you, Council Member, um, not Dr. Council Member <laughs> Plunt, <laughs> and Council Member Rout. Thank you, Mary James. Um, I would like my funds to go to No Opportunity Wasted Foundation. Um, they've done a lot of work with um, providing like shoes to residents. Um, they uh, did a, a back to school event in partnership with a couple of us in the town last year. Um, during the holiday season, they give out like free toys to our Bladensburg residents to have like a toy drive. I know last year they had even had like a horse and carriage to come through the town and they were handing out toys. So they're really, really um, phenomenal young men that went to Bladensburg High School that pulled together for this 
um, this organization. So I would like to um, give uh, my funds to them. Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you, uh, Council Member Rao. I think that's incredible, the work that they're doing. And you only gave a short version. There's even more, like the diaper distribution. And um, I know whatever resources we give to them, they will use well and just agree with you. They certainly are worthy. Basketball. Yes, I mean, everything. I mean, you can go on and on. <laughs> They always give it. They are. And um, for my donation, I want to give the full 500 to the Bladensburg High School football team. Uh, some of you may have already heard, but they've just been having funding challenges with trying to get equipment for the students and decent uniforms. And so just in addition to try to help uh, get business donations for them, thought that this could go a long way as far as planting a seed to help them uh, because it, we want them to benefit from teamwork and sports. And certainly I know I lot, learned a lot about collaborating and teamwork by playing sports. And it's a way you learn to work out issues. You get your frustration out. It's a great positive outlet. And we just want the guys to feel good about themselves where they're out on the field competing, look their best, play their best. If you look good, you play good. And so that it weighs on kids when they have to come out to compete and they look lesser than their peers from other schools that are better resourced. And so again, we'll definitely continue working to try to get some company sponsors, but wanna just help plant a seed there with that $500. And so with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the mayor and council discretionary funds for FY 2022 for uh, Shine CDC from council member McBride from, for the Taekwondo Ramblers with the donation by council member Brown for End Time Harvest Ministries with Councilmember uh, Blunt's donation, the Now Foundation for Councilmember Route, and the Bladensburg High School football team for myself, Mayor James. Is there a motion? Motion to move. Thank you, Councilmember Brown. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember McBride. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Mayor James. Uh, go ahead, Councilmember Route. Yes, um, unfortunately, um, I have a conflict of interest. Um, my son plays on the football team, so I would like to recuse myself from the vote. Got it. So I'll call for abstentions uh, as well, so that can be noted in the record. Uh, all in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any nays? No nays. Any abstentions? Abstain. Thank you. The motion carries. At this time, we'll move forward with the dump truck purchase for Public Works Department, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Charnovich at this time. Uh, yes, um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll do a quick summary for those who were not turned into the uh, council work session um, a little bit ago. Um, so the uh, town budgeted in this fiscal year uh, to replace one of its um, old, old dump trucks. And um, the Public Works Department and Finance Department, uh, I worked in collaboration with them to uh, obtain a, a, a bid. Uh, we are piggybacking off of a, a source well contract and for the public watching. Uh, this is a way for municipalities to gain the, uh, the, the best price uh, possible. Uh, when it comes to replacing um, uh, equipment. So um, with that, uh, I would ask maybe the mayor uh, to, to provide the motion to the council uh, that we, that we uh, had discussed earlier um, for the approval of the dump truck, please. Thank you for the recap, Mr. Charnovich. And so the dump truck purchase uh, does total $99,947. And so per the discussion in the previous meeting, uh, the council agreed to take the additional just under $10,000 from a specific budget line item. So that will be reflected in this motion. And so is there a motion to purchase a 2023 international truck equipped with stainless steel dump body from Beltway International LLC, who holds a Navistar international contract through Sourcewell slash NJPA contract number 060920-NVS at a total cost of $99,947. This will include a transfer of $9,947 from budget line item 6979 to the dump truck line item 6970 
to cover the overage for the budgeted amount of $90,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Council Member Brown. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Rout. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The eyes have it. Thank you so much. We will look forward to seeing that nice new stainless steel dump truck in the coming months. I know it takes time for it, but look forward to that. I feel like we need a ribbon cutting for it because those vehicles take such a beating with snow removal and everything else. Uh, but thank you to the staff who work to uh, do the research and uh, hash that out. At this time, uh, continuing with financial business, it is time to uh, have the ordinance 02-2022 read, and this is to adopt FY23 budget and set real, prop real property tax, and this is the second reading. So over to you, Mr. Charnovich. Thank you, Mayor. One moment. Oh, thank you for Mr. Tonelli for pulling up our Visual aid. Um, so uh, as mayor mentioned, this is the second reading of our budget ordinance uh, for proposed FY23 budget. First reading was held on May the 9th. So we have an ordinance to levy the real property and personal property tax rates and appropriate and adopt the operating budget of the mayor and town council of Bladensburg, Maryland for fiscal year of July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023. Be it ordained by the mayor and town council of Bladensburg that pursuant to the authority contained in article 501 of the charter of the town of Bladensburg, the town budget for the fiscal year 2023 is attached here too, and be it further ordained that the real property tax levy for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2022 is 74 cents per $100 assessed value and $2.09 per $100 of assessed business personal property value located within the corporate limits of the town of Bladensburg. And now therefore be it enacted and ordained by the mayor and council of the town of Bladensburg to approve the general operating budget for fiscal year 2023 and be it further enacted and ordained that upon passage of this ordinance, the same shall be authenticated by the signature of, of the mayor and town clerk to be recorded among the town books kept for that purpose, and that a certified copy of the ordinance shall be posted in the town hall in public view for a period of not less than 10 days after its passage, and be it further ordained that this ordinance shall be effective on the first day of July 2022. The requirement for reading this ordinance on two separate days was fulfilled on May 9th, 2022, and today, June 6th, 2022. Introduced by the mayor and town council of the town of Bladensburg at a regular meeting on May 9th, 2022, and thereafter this ordinance was prominently posted at the town hall and available for inspection by the public. Um, and that is all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Charnovich, for conducting the second reading of the budget ordinance. And as you stated, thank you, Mr. Tonelli, for pulling it up so the residents could follow along as the ordinance was read. And so with that, is there a motion to, propose, to approve proposed FY 2023 budget ordinance number 2-2002? Elmo. Moved by Council Member Rout. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member McBride. Any further discussion? I just, again, as said earlier, when we were wrapping up the work session, want to thank everyone for being such a great participant in this process. We had several meetings, went through every single line item, looked at things over and over again, and just appreciate you all taking the time and making yourselves available and participating. Uh, so with that, I will call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. The budget has passed and will take effect amazing. July We met 1st. every week. <laughs> we, right. <laughs>
it's almost not as intense, but almost week. like giving birth because you have the release, like it's done. We agreed. We looked at everything. The baby is here. The baby's here. <laughs> Well, technically, July 1st. July 1st. That's our birthday. That's the birthday of the budget baby. We so, Vito, congratulations, Vito. You have a budget baby. Thank you. <laughs> but again, it was, I always like going through this process because we just take our time and go through every single line item. So again, the patients, you guys taking all that time away from your family and other things, I, I don't take that lightly. So again, thank you to the whole team. Uh, so that completes our financial business. And we're now on to um, the next item. We don't have anything under new business at this time. So we'll move right into the staff reports, <laughs> beginning with Mr. Tonelli, because <laughs> we haven't heard from you enough in the last like three months. <laughs> Um, actually, I do not have a staff report for this month. I mean, a formal, I'm sorry, let me back up, a formal financial report because with the meeting being pushed up and uh, the packet going out on Friday the 3rd, um, our month of May is still open. We're still receiving um, expenses in the mail. So we're, and it'll be at least to the end of the end of this week before we can close out May and, and I can do financials through May. Um, it just takes time for, to get those. It, a lot of large bills come in in the last um, uh, date of the 31st of the month, um, insurances, the trash contract and everything. So um, I didn't want to put out an incomplete financial report basically. Um, and also it's kind of pressed the budget. So uh, that, that took a little bit more priority. But uh, as soon as the financial re report is done for May, um, after most likely it's, it's going to be not next week because I'll be gone at, um, uh, for the GFOA conference and also the MML, it'll be the following week that I'll send out to the mayor and council. But I would like to um, it, introduce our new uh, accounting assistant or financial assist assistant, Christina Daves, um, who's, who started with us. Um, about three weeks ago, and she's doing great. She is a lifelong Prince Georgian um, and worked up the road here in Hyattsville for 14 years. Um, it actually worked out great because she came referred to us um, by Jennifer Dodson, who retired from us for 31 years and said, you know, this is a really great person who knows accounting and, you know, who, who would be great here. We, we still went through the interview process and, and um, and that, and I actually got a, another referral for the same person from a member of public safety. So it's nice to get two current employee referrals. So that for this position, you have to be comfortable and trust somebody and, uh, you know, to work with every day and to get two positive referrals you know, for the same, to, for the same person. It kind of, you know, so it uh, and it's really worked out well, and it's taken a huge lift off. So um, I just want to welcome her, um, and I, I think the mayor and council I've been through here and uh, introduce themselves and everything. And and once we get back into public and everything, you know, we can bring her in and everything, so the public can say hi. That's all I have. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. And I do understand this month just ended last Tuesday. And so <laughs> we moved this meeting up from next week, Monday. So I think you're forgiven. Plus, you've been working on that little budget baby uh, of yours. Yeah, the budget so, baby is how yeah. you said. <laughs> I think you're forgiven this time around. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for that report, Mr. Tonelli. And again, welcome to the new finance clerk. We look wor forward to working with her. And as you said, it's great to hear Kim. Um, I know Kim mentioned that mm -hmm. she knows her pretty well. I was there Friday and saw Kim bringing the little ones by to say hello. So I was like, okay, this is wonderful. <laughs> and then hearing Jen, who has very high standards, is on board. <laughs> yes, that was. <laughs> yep. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, oh, it was right. a very good choice. Very good choice. I'm very happy. Excellent. Well, speaking of happy, we want to stay happy. So we're going to turn it over to our wonderful chief of police who always comes with the happy news. <laughs> Even when it's not so great, she finds a way to find the positive. So over to you, chief. Uh, thank you, May. Good afternoon, uh, May Council uh, residents and colleagues. Uh, I'm going to be brief. Uh, this time you have the time of going rich. <laughs> so I'm going to be brief. <laughs> Uh, very brief this time. We want to make sure that uh, 
we get out here, we look like we we doing well. I still see uh, daylight. So I just want to talk about a few highlights that we have. Uh, we want, you know, had a again, we had a phenomenal time recognizing employees for uh, our town of Bladensburg uh, staff um, at the banquet. Uh, it was very well attended. Um, and we just took that time to recognize our, our uh, employees. Uh, in light of everything that's going on around the country, uh, me as the chief, uh, I know it's incumbent upon me to get our staff trained and uh, responding to critical incidents. Uh, so I just wanted to let the uh, council and residents know that uh, our Bladensburg team, uh, we are um, taking these incidents very serious. We are uh, doing as much training as we can involving active shooters, critical responses and things like that. Um, TACMED, which is a stop the bleed um, uh, training that we also implemented. Um, we had a number of uh, national days in, in this month, Memorial Day, Mental Health uh, uh, Month, uh, National EMS uh, Day. We had a uh, Public Works Day. We recognized our public safety. We uh, recognized our public works people and our EMS because these are the individuals that don't have an option to swerve around any danger or or tasks or projects that put that are put before the uh, uh, code enforcement, especially. Um, just want to talk about some uh, upcoming events that we have. Um, uh, uh, this June 9th, we do have a movie in the park, and we invite our, our community to come out and engage with us once again. Uh, and bring the family out. We're watching a great movie uh, called Soul. It's one of those cartoon animated uh, videos, and we want to bring. Uh, we want you to bring out your. Uh, Bring the family out, bring the lawn chairs out. We praying that the weather, fingers crossed, that the weather uh, is conducive to watching the movie in the park and it, it's not too hot. Um, so we want everyone to come out and let's connect again, once again with our um, community action team who always does a phenomenal job. Uh, we do have a couple new hires. Uh, we hire, we're getting ready to hire uh, a new code enforcement that will bring them up to staff because the last uh, person we had was put back to being a police officer. So that left a vacancy there and we have selected someone to fill that. Uh, today, I just made a job offer to another uh, lateral police officer. Uh, tomorrow, I'm making another job offer to a dispatch because our dispatcher, John uh, Thurfall, is going into the police academy. So we will be, uh, we have done interviews to fill that position. So we want to keep fully, we want to stay as fully staffed as we can possibly be. So that means that when someone leaves or someone's transitioning, we on top of our recruitment. Um, we, and also we talked about, this is the last point. We are making history again in the town of Bladensburg. We're having our very first K-9 position filled today. The, I saw four of our uh, staff work uh, extensively, some of them, and I'm not going to say anybody's age, but some of them do have a AARP card, but they went, they still stood up to the challenge. Uh, we had the oxygen waiting for them at the other end, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm so proud of uh, the hard work that these men and women do, uh, our staff on the front lines and behind the scenes, but the, the K-9 school will start July 5th. Uh, we have a dog that has good social skills because we want to be able to do demonstrations at schools and things like that. And that was one of the uh, questions that was on it, that we look for our handlers to be innovative and engaging to our community, and especially with our youth at these schools, because uh, they really love seeing canines coming to the school. And I saw our elected officials when we had our uh, national aid out and our allied agency bought their dog. And I felt a little slighted there because we could, we should have had our dog out there. So we are moving forward and we are taking our town of Blainsbury PD uh, to another level. So we will continue to keep moving forward and leaning into the foxhole. That concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. And so we didn't hear the name. Did you make that announcement or not yeah. yet? For the- For the canine. Selected, yeah. The Is it not? The handler. Is it too early uh, to tell? No, because I, I know I do have a couple of them on the line. So oh, okay. Okay. Got it. it. <laughs> we'll it's, wait. It's official. Okay. But we do have the scores. The scores are in. We the did, scores are did in. Very well. 
I they know our chief, huh? I saw a few people sweating on Friday talking about the fitness <laughs> test that was coming today. So uh, I'm glad you had the oxygen ready for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they all looking forward and we're excited as well because uh, we're doing some different things here and looking forward to moving on. Uh, you to you some may just height. have to have a stretch session for them or a massage tomorrow so they can like do patrol after uh, that test today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping we can get a, uh, you know, what's those mas masseuse people Right, here, right. You may you need know, to do kinda, that. Seriously. <laughs> I can bring a roller pin out the oven and get the roll on the hamstrings. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> Council uh, member Rout, I see her, your hand. Um, thank you, um, Chief Collinson, for your report. Um, on a more serious note, just with all of the active shootings that have been taking place all over the country, um, I have been asked by residents, you know, are our officers up to date and training? And I don't want to speak for you, um, Chief Collinson. So um, given that this is a council meeting, can you just go over the different active shooter trainings that our officers um, attend? And I know we just responded to an active shooter in another jurisdiction a few months back. So can you just go over that for the public, please? Yes. So, um, like I said, uh, two weeks ago, we did a, a full scale um, active shooter drill um, in collaboration with our uh, EMS and fire partners across the street. Uh, so we had live scenarios. We had props. We set up scenarios for them to go through. Uh, we are doing that. We also continue to do our um, stop the bleed, um, uh, applying tourniquets. Um, we just went up and updated our school floor plans. So uh, we are doing that. We're updating in the process of, of updating our contact information because sometimes we have to have somebody outside making contact on the inside. Uh, but the one thing about it, um, you know, we, and, and I don't want to slight any agency, but we're not going to wait 20 minutes to go in. That's, that's just not going to happen. Uh, we, we know we work a consequential job with consequential risk, and we are willing to step up to that our, our obligation and take care of what we need to take care of. In addition to that, we are also standing up. We're working with uh, some, we're trying to get the mental health part of that in place as well, because we have to have that debrief when things go down. Uh, and, and I know from personal experience what this traumatic effect can leave on a person, um, being involved in a couple of them already. Uh, and I know what, what I went through personally, what my family went through. So we got to have all of these, these uh, pieces in place to take care of our, uh, not just the residents, but we got to take care of the officers as, as well when these uh, traumatic incidents happen. So we are doing the mental health. We are doing the, uh, uh, the uh, active shooter training. We are doing the, the uh, technical part of it with the stop the bleed. We are looking at upgrading our equipment, our shields and things like that, so we can respond. We're not waiting 20 minutes to go into a building to save children. We're going in. Thank you, Chief. And just to uh, tag on, I do appreciate the difference that you've made in this agency. I know when I got on the council, one of the concerns was the weaponry that our officers have. A handgun is no match for an uh, automatic rifle. And so the council at the time did support me with the request to outfit our officers with long guns. So that given the fact that we have six schools within the town, and then if you caught you know, count the one on our backside border, seven within a 1.1 square mile. And I appreciate the leadership from you at the time to say, no, we don't want to wait. We want to make sure our officers have the confidence and the training necessary to respond quickly. Um, but all the training in the world without the right equipment won't get you anywhere. And so I'm really thankful that you got the vehicles outfitted so that those uh, weapons are, you know, with the officers during their shift. They're not having to, as previous, um, staff back in the 80s run back to the station right. to get the shotgun yeah. and then go. You have them equipped, ready, trained, so they can respond immediately. And we've seen numerous incidents, unfortunately, where you all have had to demonstrate that training. And it really, really is appreciated because sadly, these incidents continue to become more and more prevalent. So thank you for 
protecting all of us and doing everything you can to keep this community safe. And then just on a personal note, I also want to um, thank you for your diligence with the critical missing child last Thursday. Yeah. I know that'll be a part of the June report, but just because it is so fresh and we're still working through uh, the situation, but just sincerely appreciate everything that you and those officers did to locate the young person and find them healthy and whole, and then to continue the follow-up that the family needs. And so sometimes we are pulling on you and asking for immediate assistance, and we don't even come back and say thank you. So I want to publicly come back and say thank you for getting every resource available to you, including the helicopter <laughs> that night we saw them out, the canine, all these other resources that you just literally picked up the phone and put into action. I mean, none of that would have happened without you. So we truly, truly appreciate everything you're doing to just make this um, police department so responsible, so responsive, and you know, so so able to respond in times of crisis with the right plan, the right actions, the right resources to get things to a positive resolution. So again, thank you, sir. You are welcome, man. But I, I just want to also commend the uh, the staff because they were the ones that were the first boots on the ground. Um, I mean, my job was the logistic part, but I also came up put my boots on the ground too because I'm always going to be there for the residents as well. Yeah, great. Thank you. And that's a good point. Thank you to every single officer who was here that night. Lieutenant Frischkorn, I saw him at one in the morning coming out to check on things. I mean, I don't want to start naming the rest of the names and miss anyone, but I've hugged, I think, pretty much everyone who was here <laughs> just to say thank you. We, we truly appreciate the extra effort. And so with that, we'll move forward. Uh, Mr. Charnovich, if you wouldn't mind covering, um, in addition to the town clerk and town administrator updates, but if you could also roll in public works, that would be helpful. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I will start with, um, start with public works. Uh, so I, I did uh, pr provide uh, Mr. Hall's report on behalf of the public works department that was in your packets. Um, I will say that over the course of the, um, over the course of the last month, I've had the opportunity to work with Mr. Hall and his team much more than I had been since as I was, when I was serving as the town clerk. And I just want to say I'm, I'm, Extremely appreciative of, of Mr. Hall and the team. Um, for starters, Decatur Street, you know, we approved that the contract at the uh, at the May meeting. Um, I, I worked to help get the contract signed with the contractor, and then after that, Mr. Hall and the team took took ran the ran the ball from there and scored the touchdown, and and uh, it's uh, that project got done. So I'm I'm very glad that um, uh, uh, that happened. Um, you know some 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 other issues, some other uh, matters that I uh, just wanted to thank uh, Purnell and the team on. Um, Boswick House. I know there were a few matters that I worked with them on over the last week, right before the event uh, that occurred on 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 Saturday, the picnic event. And uh, and I'm uh, uh, very appreciative of him and the team um, working on working on at the Boswick House to to accomplish those things uh, before that event, uh, and also the. Um, the mental health awareness day that was that was held, uh, Mr. Hall and the team did did a did a lot for that with uh, uh, taking items over to the community center uh, uh, and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, very much appreciate all of their uh, all of their help, uh, help and effort over the last uh, over the last month to help me. Um, and for public works, that's those are just a few of the highlights that I wanted to touch on. Mr. Hall did provide a written report, but if anybody has any questions, I I could. I try to answer them. I don't see any questions. If you want to continue on with a clerk updates and a town administrator, interim town administrator updates. Sure, sure. Um, I don't have a formal report uh, of this evening, but I would I would just make it uh, maybe an overarching statement um, of, of thanks. Uh, I wanted to um, I wanted to thank our team, I guess, briefly. Uh, you know, over, over the course of the last month, I've been wearing a, a, a lot of different hats that I uh, uh, wasn't previously wearing. So I wanted to, as, as, as we just saw, we just adopted the next fiscal year's budget, which I came into at the very last moment. 
So uh, thank you to uh, Mr. Tonelli for one, uh, who, who was very patient with me with any questions I had to get help us get through that process um, as I flew in here at the last moment. Um, and thank you to uh, Chief Collington also, um, uh, and all the rest of our, our directors that have uh, helped me transition into this uh, in, interim role and also to our staff. So um, uh, uh, the front office and everyone else who's, who's been extremely helpful with, with me, with any questions that I've had or, or has stayed patient with me as I'm, as I'm bouncing all these different ideas that, uh, that, are, that are coming to me and, and, and things to work on and issues. Uh, patience is much appreciated. And I just wanna say thank you uh, to, to, uh, to all of our department heads and staff as, over the course of this last month. So look forward to continue working with you all. Great, thank you so much, Mr. Charnovich. So at this time, <clears throat> that completes the staff reports and we'll move forward with the mayor and council reports, beginning with council member Blunt for ward two. I have no report for this. <laughs> no report, but yes. Okay. Okay. No worries, okay. We, we have the gala to start working on, right? The senior gala. Yes. Okay. All right, uh, council member route for ward one. Thank you, Mayor James. Um, I was talking. Um, during lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, transgender, queer, and intersex LGBTQI plus Pride Month, we can reflect on um, the different progress that LGBTQI and their allies have made in the fight for justice, inclusion, and equality. I want to remind everyone that unfortunately that the rights of individuals that identify as LGBTQI are still under attack. Members of the LGBTQI community, especially people of color and transgenders, continue to face discrimination and cruel, persistent efforts to undermine their human rights. This is true for some of our very own Bladensburg residents. I applaud those who have embraced LGBTQI Pride Month nationally. We must remember inclusiveness is key and we all should ensure all members of this community are recognized because we're all deserving of dignity, respect and support because we're all humans. I also reflect on June 19th, 1865 when Mayor General Gordon arrived in Galveston, Texas to read a federal order abolishing the Institute of Slavery. The moment was significant because unfortunately the enslaved have been free for two years. Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation April of 1863. I urge each Bladensburg resident to join our nation and our state as they celebrate Juneteenth, which is um, the freedom of the enslaved um, black individuals in this country um, and read about some black American history or support a black business. I've participated in a host of activities to include the Boswick House this weekend, um, the Town of Bladensburg Community Yard Sale, support and resource acquisition to Bladensburg residents in need of health services. Uh, I facilitated Town of Bladensburg participation in the Mental Health Awareness Day, um, the Father of Men and Boys Commission. They had um, a really cool um, fatherhood initiative that I worked on. Um, in addition to attended a Memorial Day uh, ceremony and the luncheon at the American Legion, disseminated mass violence resources to colleagues in neighboring municipalities, attended the Port Towns quarterly meeting. I was elected um, to be a part of the PGCMA board. Um, I worked with um, our colleagues, like We Lead by Example, the IME, Now Foundation, PG Department of Health and Human Services on our Mental Health Awareness Day. We responded to residents' concerns regarding road and safety issues. Um, also, yard waste and trash pickup. I participated in the PG County Back to Work Day. Um, facilitated a couple calls with the State of Maryland 988 coordinator attended PG County School District 4 Advisory Council meeting and the District 47 Leadership meeting. I will be attending Ocean City uh, next week um, and um, plan on uh, attending the uh, movie in the park 
also participation in the NAACP voter registration event um, scheduled for Juneteenth. I want to give some important information. There's some council uh, member. I'm sorry, we're at the three minute mark. I just wanted to give you the warning, but I okay. want to let you finish your point. Thank you. There's some free tutoring called Book Nook for Prince George's County children K through five. Um, they have to register first. It's for children and it's totally free and it's small groups um, for children in K through five. So just go to the PG County website and go to Book Nook. And Hey, family leave became law in, on June 1st. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Rout. We'll continue with council reports from Council Member Brown for Ward 1. Woo, thank you, Council Member um, um, Rout and uh, Mayor. Um, but really, uh, to also talk about Juneteenth, what happened this year the, uh, in Annapolis on April the 12th, 2022, uh, Larry, Governor Larry Hogan. Uh, signed into law a bill that established a Juneteenth as a, le as a, a, a legal and employee holiday in the state of Maryland. So the House Bill two, uh, 227 was introduced by Delegate Andrea Harrison Fletcher. And, um, and, it, and I mean, the great thing is that it passed the House at 130 votes to zero and the Senate at 46 votes um, to zero. So, you know, that was a great uh, feat for us here in the state of Maryland that now uh, the Juneteenth is a National Independence Day as a state legal holiday and a state employee ho holiday. So that was um, some more significant work that our uh, senators and delegates continue to do when they go up there and they um, represent us um, um, up there um, in, in, in Annapolis. They really, really, really do work hard. So, and thanks for giving the other ed educational piece in terms of in terms of some of the background, because I, I sometimes um, we just need the educational piece about Juneteenth and what Juneteenth will, um, really, really is, and and the significance behind that, and this, and just definitely go out there and continue to read, because now over forty three states in and the District of Columbia recognize rec recognize June, Juneteenth. Um, I did attend um, a, a host of events. And then also, we also continue to work, uh, continue to work with the mayor council and our staff as we uh, uh, assist our residents with uh, rental mortgage and utilities assistance through the American Rescue uh, Plan, Plan Act. So um, yeah, so, so that, and there uh, we attended the Bosphic House and, and, to, and uh, the Memorial Day. So um, that's, um, that's, that's pretty much, um, all, I, all I have to say. <laughs> Great. Thank you Look for your Look forward to, to other things and budget and all that other stuff that's in the upcoming months. And, and we'll be going to the Maryland Municipal League uh, 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 next week as well. Great. Thank you, Councilmember Brown. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll hear from Councilmember McBride. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Okay, I'll, I'll be real brief. I'm, I'm the one who like to be short and sweet. <laughs> um, I did attend the, um, the mental health awareness event with Council Member Rout uh, this month and also with Council Member Brown. Um, I attended the scholarship graduate banquet. Uh, let's see, I met personally with property managers. I went out personally to introduce myself to the um, property managers in the town of Bladenburg Ward 2. Uh, I met with the manager from, uh, the assistant manager from Autumn Woods. I met with the assistant manager from Phoenix Apartments. And uh, I did not get to meet with the gateway property manager because she was in a meeting, but I met her staff. Um, and I made them aware of the ARPA funding that was available for our emergency rental assistance uh, to help the the members of the town of Bladenburg, if they were affected during the pandemic. Um, I attended the Boswick House event and um, the Caribbean Fest, which I truly enjoyed uh, on Saturday. Um, I, what else did I do? I attended the memorial ceremony at Pete's Cross and I finally got to go to Colmar Manor. And so I met with some of the, uh, the people there. That's my report. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Councilmember McBride. So the month of May was busy, as you've heard from all of our team from start to finish. I know some of us started out attending the senior meeting for the tenant council at Parkview. They have resumed in-person meetings. And so Councilmember McBride, myself and Chief Collington were able to go and share updates. And honestly, it just felt good to be in the same room with people um, because the seniors are not doing Zoom for their tenant council meetings. So they really have not been meeting as a body. And so we were there and able to support them. There were a number of budget work sessions to be engaged in, plus the homework between those budget sessions. And as uh, Chief Collington mentioned, I'm really thankful to his team particularly Natasha and Kim, who really did a stellar job putting the staff appreciation banquet together. Um, we have not had anything like that. And so it was beautiful to just take a moment to pause, reflect on the good work that our team is doing and who we rely on every day. Uh, as it was pointed out, the mayor and council are part-time, but the staff are the ones here doing the day-to-day -day work. And it, we're 24 hours, seven days a week police agency, and they always respond. The staff is always there Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in that office to assist you. And so it was nice to just take a moment and reflect um, on the wonderful things that they've accomplished. We did attend the Port Towns quarterly meeting and just want the residents to be aware. We got some great information from uh, Mr. Abel Olivo on a sustainability project that um, Many of us in the port town seem to have an interest in, and this was to really focus in on um, training young Latino uh, resident students and as well as their parents on um, watershed opportunities. And so whether tree plantings or different things to really engage that community a bit more than we've had, we've done before. Um, they've done things like fishing days and bike outings, but to really make a concerted effort to pull them in with some of the sustainability goals. And this does tie into the overall um, sustainable goals that were uh, approved, I think, back in 2018 for the town. And so I look forward to following up with them on that. Uh, in addition to that, we heard uh, during the quarterly meeting from the mental health uh, coordinator who's a part of the Hyattsville Police Department and lends a lot of resources to the officers and the staff. And so just took a lot of notes there to figure out how we can incorporate some of these wellness activities to make sure that we're taking time to make sure that those who are serving and outwardly providing uh, customer service on a day-to-day -day basis are also themselves being poured into and not depleted mentally and emotionally. So look forward to working with them and really digging into some of the resources that were provided there. Um, again, just the um, Memorial Day celebration was held last week, last uh, May 30th, last Tuesday, I'm sorry, last Monday. And that was a beautiful ceremony. It was so nice seeing faces that we have not seen in person in many years. We had a smaller contingent during the, the highest points of COVID. And so last week, we actually saw more people coming out to honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And truly, that was a beautiful thing. Um, and Ms. Renee Green wanted to report as part of the patriotic update, the Peace Cross renovations are to be completed in September. And they're looking to have the dedication of the new monument November 11th, which is in line with Veterans Day. It's always at 11 o'clock on Veterans Day. So please mark your calendars early. Um, as was reported before in the work session, we followed up with SHA on the 769 uh, road improvement and have more to come there in terms of follow-up. Um, and then also just joined the council in attending the scholarship dinner for End Time Harvest Ministries. And that was a, a true honor to be there, highlighting the young people that the council approved uh, providing scholarship opportunities to at the last council meeting. So to be able to see them, meet and greet them and understand their goals was fantastic. So uh, that's the short synopsis. I'll end with on a personal note. I, uh, a lot of the time I had to dedicate last month was to my own child, my own little scholar who uh, grew up in this community. Uh, some of the residents who are longtime folks may recall, I was pregnant with Imani when Walter first campaigned to be on the council. And our beautiful baby girl graduated from high school on May 22nd. 
And that was absolutely fantastic. And she will be heading off to Florida A&M and a historically black college this fall. So uh, a lot of time in May was dedicated <laughs> to all the things surrounding being the mother of a graduate. But um, thank you all for being a part of her village and our village and really helping her to achieve one of her goals. There are many more to come. So that concludes my report for tonight. And that brings us to the end of tonight's agenda. Uh, Council Member uh, McBride, your hand was up. Excellent. Yes. Um, I just wanted to say one other thing to remind our residents that we have the Restore a Brick for Peace Cross event. Uh, they said that the website is not working too well, but you need to print out the application and fill it out. And please purchase your brick, your brick so we can keep our peace cross. Thank That's you. It. Thank you. Thank you. And just a side note to that, the bricks are on discount, I believe, through the end of June. So they're 50% off. So instead of being 250, they're 150. What 125? Uh, wait, say that. Instead of being 500, they're Oh, okay. Oh, I gave it a double discount. <laughs> I'm like, what? They're going to get you. <laughs> yes, thank you. I don't want that out there. They are $250, 50% off of the normal price, but again, only for the month of June. And I did ask Mr. Charnovich if he could include that application form in the e-blast just to get the word out and encourage more residents to, um, you know, to participate in doing that. Council Member Rout. Yes, point of information, Mayor. I know this is not on our agenda, but given the Juneteenth holiday, do we need to do anything? Because that's not a traditional holiday that we normally have staff be off. I know it falls on a Sunday, but I just wanted to bring that up because we're not meeting again. I know we had to do something yeah, last thank you. year. Yeah, so last year we were in a tricky position because it was the first time it was being acknowledged, but my understanding is it is now a state and federal holiday, which means yes. just like Memorial Day, you know, we would be closed on that date. Okay. Um, so Mr. Charnovich, unless your understanding is different with the holiday being on a Sunday, the observance would be on Monday, the night, Monday the 20th. Uh, yes, Mayor, that's correct. I actually intended on send, sending out a, a, a staff memo to all departments that will uh, the staff will be um, off on on that Monday for the federal holiday. Perfect. Thank you. Thank and you, Mayor. And so, yes, absolutely. So with that, I'll now call for a motion to adjourn. Woohoo! Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> awesome move. I'll take that. <laughs> right. Thank you, Councilmember Blunt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member McBride. I'll, any discussion? Hey, Hearing no, 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 just real chief, I'm real, real brief. The chief said he finally gets out and can see some daylight. <laughs> right. So I'll now call for the vote to keep that going. All in favor, let it be known by the saying goodbye. Aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you all so much. Have a great Aye. evening. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye -bye.